Good morning, everyone. The intentions for Holy Mass this morning for Afghanistan, for Brother Luke on his birthday, uh, for those recommended to our prayers, and for the repose of the souls of Pasita Balo and Conrada Limbo, for all those who died recently, for the souls in purgatory, for the conversion of sinners salvation of souls, and the reign of God's kingdom on earth. You are just, O Lord, and your judgment is right. Treat your servant in accord with your merciful love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, we must prepare ourselves by asking the Lord for humble and contrite hearts. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, You alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Come, Lord, and save us. Come, Lord, and save us. It is the Lord who preserves fidelity forever, who does justice to those who are oppressed. It is he who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who sets prisoners free. Come, Lord, and save us. It is the Lord who opens the eyes of the blind, the Lord who raises up those who are bowed down. It is the Lord who loves the just, the Lord who protects the stranger. Come, Lord, and save us. The Lord upholds the orphan and the widow, but thwarts the path of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever, the God of Zion from age to age. Come, Lord. A reading from the letter of St. James. My brethren, show no partiality as you hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man with gold rings and in fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, have a seat here, please, while you say to the poor man, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brethren, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to those who love him? The word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Jesus was preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing every disease and every infirmity among the people. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, through the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they begged him to lay his hands upon him. And taking him aside from the multitude privately, he put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue, and looked up to heaven. He sighed and said to him, Ephata, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And he charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> this is one of the few miracles of Jesus that happen very slowly. The norm is that people are cured instantaneously and without apparent effort, sometimes without even being asked, without even asking for a healing. So I thought today it might be useful to look at this gospel slowly, have a slow homily, and get some sense of the 
dramatic, uh, graphic details and what they reveal to us as we go through the gospel. So Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon, through the region of Decapolis. Now this might sound just a nice introduction, but it's a bit curious because if you know anything about the background, Tyre is 50 miles south of Beirut and Sidon is 28 miles south of Beirut and the Decapolis is quite a long distance over on the eastern borders of Palestine. So Mark has Jesus wandering all through this area, which is an area inhabited by the Gentiles. These are Gentile cities. Therefore, in the eyes of the Jews, these are all pagans. And the fact that Jesus is wandering through this territory is itself telling us something about the universalism of his message and his willingness uh, to work miracles even among the pagans. The Decapolis means ten cities. It was a region established in the year 63 before Christ uh, by the Romans at their invasion of Palestine. And it was, of course, also a pagan territory, ruled by pagans. But still in all, they brought him a, a man who was deaf. So the pagans brought this man to Jesus. So his reputation as a healer and as a holy man of God must have preceded him. And the text is careful to use a technical term to describe his affliction. They use a term, kufos, which means profoundly deaf, that is, born deaf, as opposed to being hard of hearing or just going, gradually going deaf. A bit like our father Siram who was born profoundly deaf. So he was profoundly deaf. And of course, that also tells us that this is the miracle is all the greater. And like with Father Cyril, a person who is profoundly deaf may have all the mechanisms for speaking, but cannot speak coherently or clearly because they cannot hear themselves. And so their voice, which can work and can be trained to speak, um, always comes across as distorted, to put it politely. So it is a very big challenge, speaking with difficulty. And so they ask Jesus to lay hands on him. That was the standard uh, expectation of healers in society at that time, and is still uh, used as a gesture of healing in our, in our own tradition. And in administering the sacrament of the sick, we are called to lay hands on those to be anointed. So. The other thing about, of course, is that Jesus, first of all, before he even did that, took the man aside privately. This is very unusual. There's only one other case of this in the Gospels. So that away from the crowd, away from people maybe who, being pagans, or even if they were followers of Jesus, curious, will, you, will it work? kind of thing. But Jesus takes the man aside very privately, away from the crowd, and then lays hands on him. Actually, 
the, the details are quite vivid. He puts his fingers into his ears and he spat and made saliva and touched the man's tongue. Now this is very interesting. Why all this detail? And it somehow evokes for us the physicality of Jesus himself. And it's a sort of reminder of the incarnation. Jesus is flesh and blood and saliva and all the rest of it, like us, and uses these elements in his healing work. Then there are, he looks up to heaven, sighs and groans. Looking up to heaven, he sighed and groans in, in some texts and said to him, Ephata. So these are symbols of prayer. And they remain prayers, even without words. To sigh, to look up to heaven, to groan. St. Paul talks about these unutterable groanings. These are prayers. And many a time we can't find words to pray, but we can sigh and long for God in our lives. And then he says the, the word of healing, e fata, which is a direct uh, Aramaic word, straight into the Greek text of Mark, e fata, be open. And then there follows a curious thing which you find here and there in the Gospels that is called the Messianic secret. He charged them to tell nobody. And the more he charged them, of course, the more they spread the news. Why this secrecy? The Messianic secret is the secret of who Jesus really is. And you'd think we'd want everybody to know who he was. But Jesus was very careful in his ministry that his real identity be not easily disclosed because it could be so easily distorted. And it's not fully revealed in its completeness and without any challenge on Calvary. When another pagan says, truly, this was the Son of God. The people, of course, are astonished beyond all measure. In fact, in the text, it's struck out of their senses by this miracle and by the details of it. So, for us, it leaves us, I think, with a few questions. The first question we can ask ourselves is whether we need healing. Are we aware of any areas in our lives that need healing? And I'm not thinking of uh, arthritis or a bad cough or anything like that. But the spiritual healing <coughs> Are we spiritually deaf? Are we spiritually tongue-tied? So we are nervous or even reluctant or ashamed to speak to others about Jesus. Do we let Jesus take us aside in quietness and silence? to minister to us, to let Jesus pray over us, to let Jesus lay his hands on us, to put, let him put his fingers, as it were, into our spiritual ears and free us to proclaim the glory of God and to proclaim our love for him. The gospel always leaves us with questions. We 
are also required to find an answer. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and was him man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. When Jesus healed, he had in mind that all of us should be healed in body and spirit. And so we bring our world and our church before the Lord that we all may be healed. That every ministry of our parish may proclaim the Messiah's presence among us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That those who serve our church (coughs) as bishops priests, pastors, and teachers may proclaim the gospel with courage, integrity, and perseverance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the laws and public policies of the world's governments and nations may be dedicated to serving the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those church peoples and churches who are persecuted for their faith and beliefs may persevere in the hope that the peace and justice of God will one day reign. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faith we profess may find expression in our compassionate care for the poor, the lost, and the forgotten 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died in Christ's peace, especially those who have died lately, may walk forever in the presence of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God, our gracious Father, will hear the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, hear the prayers we lift up to you. Give us the courage and generosity to crucify our self-interest and take up our crosses to follow Christ, so that we may bring his new life and liberation to our world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Yes. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. So let us pray together that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice <clears throat> of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
<coughs> you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink the cup, we proclaim your death until you come to Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, 
and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, Sylvester, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, <clears throat> all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. 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 The body of Christ. 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 Amen. The body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ.
Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul is yearning for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for God, the living God. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and the heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. And be to God. <coughs> Saint Michael, we are the Archangel, angel. Defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls.